जय गोपीजन्न वल्ला जय गिरीवराधारी जय गिरीवराधारी शोदनंदन व्रजजन रंजन शोदनंदन व्रजजन रंजन यमुना तेरावन चारे जय हो राधा माधवा जय कुंज बिहारे जय हो राधा माधवा झायो कुंज बिहारे जय गोपी जन वल्ला जय गिरी जय गिरी वराधारे सोदनंदन व्रज जन रंजन सोदनंदन व्रज जन रंजन यमुना तेरावन चारे तेरा वन्ना चारे जय हो राधा माधवा जय कुंज बिहारे जय राधा माधवा जय कुंज बिहारे हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे श्रीराध महादेव अष्ट साख शिवन महाप्रभु की जय श्रीम भागवतम की जय श्री प्रभु भारत की जय
This morning we are reading from Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 8, Chapter 22, entitled Bali Maharaj Surrenders His Life, Shloka 31. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Ishame Prapitastanam. Dush prapam amare rapi Savarner antarasyayam Bavitendro madashrayam Eshame prapitastanam Dush prapam amare rapi Savarner antarasyayam Bhavitendro madashrayam Please chant. Vaishnavis, please. Esha Bali Maharaj me by me Prabhita has achieved Sthanam, a place, Dushprapam, extremely difficult to obtain, Amarai Api, even by the demigods, Savarne, Antarasya, during the period of Manu known as Savarne, I am this Bali Maharaj, Bhavita, will become Indra, the Lord of the heavenly planet, Mat Ashraya, completely under my protection. Translation and purpose by His Divine Grace, Prabhupada. The Lord continued, because of His great tolerance, I have given Him a place not obtainable even by the demigods. 
he'll become king of the heavenly planets during the period of the Manu known as Savarni, Purport. This is the mercy of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Even if the Lord takes away a devotee's mater material opulences, the Lord immediately offers him a position of which the demigods cannot even dream. There are many examples of this in the history of devotional service. One of them is the opulence of Sudama Vipra. Sudama Vipra suffered severe material scarcity, but he was not disturbed and did not deviate from devotional service. Thus, he was ultimately given an exalted position by the mercy of Lord Krishna. Here the word Madashraya is very significant. Because the Lord wanted to give Bali Maharaj the exalted position of Indra, the demigods might naturally have been envious of him and might have fought to disturb his position. But the Supreme Personality of God had assured Bali Maharaj that he would always remain under the Lord's protection, Mad Ashraya. Om Magyana Timirandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshur Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Vandeham Shri Guru Shri Utapada Kamalam Shri Guru Vaishnavam Shya Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Ragunatam Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Savadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padam Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakam Vitam Shya he Krishna Karuna Sindo Dina Bando Jagatpate Gopisha Gopika Kanta Radha Kantana Mostute Tapta Kanchana Gorangi Radhe Vrindavaneshwari Vishabhanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Namo Mahavadanyaya Krishna Prema Pradayate Krishna Krishna Chaitanya Namne Gorat Vishre Namaha Jashri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadhadar Shiva Sadi Gora Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So here we have the ending part of the pastime in which Bali Maharaj first loses everything and then by the mercy of the Lord he gets much more than he, than he lost. So this theme of uh, Lord's taking away and giving to his devotees is something very interesting that I would like to focus in uh, this class. Uh, did you have you ever had the experience that Krishna took away something from you? Can you recall? What was that? Was it painful? Purifying? And also on, on the other side, have you ever had the experience that uh, Krishna gave you something and knew it was Krishna, not your karma? How you felt? Jubilant? Happy? So the question is, what, when and why the Lord takes away and gives to his devotees? We'll try to answer this question by exploring the pastime that Srila Prabhupada uh, quotes in his purport, uh, the Sudama Vipra, the story of Sudama Vipra. So who was Sudama Vipra? As we know, he was Krishna's uh, school friend while Krishna st studied in uh, Avanti under Sandipani Muni, Sudama Vipra was one of the boys who was there. But later, when the schooling was finished, everybody w went in different directions. And Sudama Vipra, he got married, but somehow or other, he was not very prosperous householder. On the opposite, uh, he suffered extreme poverty. He just relied on what the providence would give. So he wouldn't go and work very hard to increase the standard of uh, his life. But he just accepted whatever providence gave. So in this way, he lived peacefully in Krishna consciousness. So he had a wife. And they lived in a hut with a broken roof. 
and quite often they didn't, they didn't even have enough to eat. So that's why they were very emaciated, hungry, dressed in a, a rag cloth. And uh, materially speaking, you can say they suffered. But because they possessed very exalted qualities, in reality, they didn't suffer. So he was very learned and detached. He had a controlled mind and the senses. He had the zero lust, no lamentation. He was an ocean of good qualities. And his wives followed the same, had also the same qualities. But one day his wife thought, it's not right that my husband and me are suffering so much because he is the personal friend of Lord Dwaraka, Sri Krishna, who possesses unlimited opulence. So why should we suffer so much? And she even suffered more than Sudama because first she had to feed her husband and then whatever is left was left for her. So she was even more hungry. But not because she was hungry, but because she didn't want her husband to be hungry anymore. She approached him one day trembling in fear. It's written she trembled in fear because she intended to ask him something unprecedented. She intended to ask him to go to Dwaraka and ask Krishna for help. And she knew it was not proper to ask the Lord for any material thing. So that's why she anticipated that he is going to protest, that he is going to object, that he will not be very happy with her request. So that's why in her mind she already preferred prepared different sort of arguments how to counteract uh, his answers. Vishnu Chakrati Thakur, Sanatana Goswami, Srila Jiva Goswami, they reveal this conversation that they had, although it's not recorded in the Bhagavatam. So she approached him and she told him, Oh Brahmana, the master of Lakshmi is your friend. So you can go and ask him for little wealth. And then the Sudam answered, but how can the Lord of Lakshmi be friend of me who am so poor? It's impossible. Then she would say, but he favors the Brahmanas. No, 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 I don't have any qualities of Brahmanas. Maybe he favors the Brahmanas, but I'm not a Brahmana. Then she had another answer, but he accepts anyone who surrenders to him. This is all right. But since I don't have any devotion, then it doesn't apply to me but uh, she didn't uh, give up. He is a Bhagavan. He knows everything. Seeing your suffering, he will be very merciful. But how he will gi give wealth just to me? Because there are so unlimited number of suffering conditioned souls. So why he would be partial and give it just to me? Well, she would reply, he might not give, but the devotees of the Lord who are serving him by fanning him and doing other services, they are the most merciful. They will give. Okay, okay, they will give, but, but I'm very embarrassed to go and ask anything from him. But he gives himself unto the person who just remembers him without asking anything. So you just need to go to his presence and without even asking him, he will bestow the wealth on you. In this way, she convinced him. Although he was in the beginning disturbed, but because she was a persistent, he accepted, okay, okay. And then he saw one good thing in that. After so many years, finally, I'll be able to see my beloved Krishna, whom I haven't seen for so many years. So his mind became pacified and he prepared for the journey. So he asked his wife, okay, I will go but can you give me some gift to give to my friend? And in their household, they had absolutely nothing to give. It was completely empty. Can you imagine that house that you don't have even a grain of rice? This must, must be real poverty. So she had to go to neighbors and beg four handfuls of chipped of flat rice. This is all that she could beg. So she begged that. She packed it in a small piece of cloth and gave it to her husband who tied it uh, on his waist and he embarked on his journey. 
It's not exactly written where he lived, but I assume somewhere in the western part of India and still the journey to Dwaraka would take days, if not weeks. And he was very weak and thin and skinny, so it was difficult for him to walk. But still he walked because he constantly meditated on the happiness he will achieve when he meets his friend Krishna. It reminds me also on Akrura's journey to Vrindavan, although Akrura had a chariot, still he was anticipating and meditating how he will meet the Krishna for the first time. So eventually, Sudama, he approached Dwaraka, and Dwaraka, as we know, was uh, encircled with uh, three sets of, set of gates, sets of gates, and there were guards there, so he was uh, apprehensive that he might not be able to pass because usually the, the beggars dressed like him are not allowed to enter Dwaraka but somehow there were some local brahmanas who were going to Dwaraka so he joined them and guards they let him in so he was very happy and now what he saw in Dwaraka 16,108 palaces were there so he had to choose one to enter so just he picked up one and entered the door of the palace. It's described that he entered the palace of uh, Rukmini Devi, Krishna's first queen. And he saw there Lord Krishna sitting on a bed together with the Rukmini. As soon as the Lord saw him, he immediately got up He went to greet him, embraced him very happily, brought him to the bed, and then he washed his feet, as the custom is. Sudama was very embarrassed, but he had to accept it. So the Lord, although his feet are worshipped by all the demigods, washed the feet of his Brahmana friend, friend Sudama. And then he sprinkled that water on his own head and the head of his queen. Next thing, he brought the arati plate and he did the full puja, full arati to Sudama. Then he fed him milk and rice and then let him bathe and rest. After that, again, he brought him uh, to the bed and they sat together. And during this time, Queen Rukmini, she was fanning Sudama with the chamara fan. The goddess of fortune personally was fanning that Brahmana who looked like a street beggar, ragged clothes, skinny, dirty. And all the residents of the palace, they were completely, completely astonished. Who is this poor, low class Brahmana? The Sri Krishna, the Lord of Dvaraka, the Lord of the universe is worshipping with such great care and attention. They could not comprehend because it was completely unsightly, unexpected scene. The difference in the social status was so great that it was something unimaginable. But still, Krishna didn't care for that. So he took Sudama's hand in his own hand Sudam also took his hands. This is a, this is a sign of uh, intimacy. In India, we can see that sometimes one man holds the hand of another man as, to show his uh, liking for each other. Of course, in the West, if you see two men holding hands, immediately you think, oh my God, something else. But in India, it's a normal thing. So they, hold it, they were holding each other's hands but Sudama had one doubt. He thought maybe Krishna mis mistook me for somebody else. <laughs> he thinks that I might be somebody else. Otherwise, how he would do such, such reception and such puja for me who is such a lowly and wretched and poor? So Krishna, he read his mind. So in order to dispel his doubts, he Ask him a question. He reminded him first, do you remember of our days in the school of our guru, Sandipani Muni? 
And then Sudama understood, yeah, Krishna remembers who I am. So Krishna had to ask him how he, he lived during all these years. So he asked him, my dear Brahmana, you know well the ways of Dharma. After you offered the Guru Dakshina, the gift of remuneration to our Guru and return home from his school, did you marry a suitable wife or not? So this was a significant question. Usually, if one is not Naishtika Brahmachari after f finishing, graduating the Gurukul, he is supposed to marry. But Sudama, he was not dressed as a renunciate, but also he was not dressed as a very prosperous householder. So there was some doubt about his social status and position. And Sudama, when he heard the question, he was a little embarrassed. He was supposed to say, yes, I'm married, I'm a householder, I'm a grihasta. But he looked like a beggar. So he was embarrassed to say anything. But of course, Krishna knew everything. So without embarrassing him even further, he said, even though you are mostly involved in household affairs, your mind is not affected by material desires, nor do you take much pleasure in the pursuit of material wealth? This I'm very, very well aware of. So he told him that he knows his position and his situation. And internally Krishna was thinking, even though you're not speaking out of embarrassment, I know everything. I know that although you are Grihasta, your heart is completely free from lust, greed, envy, and all other vices. I know that you also don't have any attraction for wealth, clothing, houses, and other things. Therefore, I will not give you these things now. Why? Krishna decided not to give him these things immediately. Because he wanted to preserve his uh, reputation uh, amongst the residents of his palace. If they saw that he gave him immediately some wealth, they would think, oh, this beggar, he came just to beg some things from Krishna. No, no, Krishna wanted to preserve that his Brahmana friend came just out of pure love. So that's why he said, I will not give you anything now, anything visible here, because I want to broadcast your fame in Dwaraka. So then uh, further, Krishna started to speak about their past together in a Gurukul, and uh, he started glorifying uh, the Guru, the position of Guru. He mentioned that there are three Gurus. First Guru is one's father, one who gives birth. Second Guru is one who gives Upanayanam, uh, who initiates one into Gayatri Mantra and engages one in ritualistic, ritualistic worship. And third one is one who teaches about him. And that Guru is considered the highest. So Guru Svadharma, Guru Bhagavad Dharma. Guru Bhagavad Dharma is more important. And then he mentioned the famous first, I'm the soul of all beings, not satisfied by ritual worship, by medical initiation, penances of self-discipline, as I'm faith, and am satisfied by faithful service rendered to one's spiritual master. So all this pastime of Krishna studying uh, in a Gurukul of Sanipani Muni was to illustrate how important for is to serve spiritual master or guru. So he reminded Su Sudama of, of that day when the guru's wife asked two of them to go to forest and collect some wood. But seasonal storm arose with fierce wind and rain and very harsh thunder and everything became flooded and it was very dark. Two of them, they were carrying that wood and they were holding each other's hands, stumbling in the darkness. So they were in great difficulty. Somehow they survived the night. In the morning, Sandipani Muni, when he saw they didn't return, he was very worried for them. So he went to the forest to search for them. And then when he found them, he embraced them and he was very happy and he told them, Oh, my dear children, you have suffered so much for my sake. 
the body is the most dear to every living entity, but you dedicated your body completely for my service, disregarding your own comfort. So that's why he gave them blessings. He said, since you're the first class brahmanas, I'm very much pleased with you. May all your desires be fulfilled and may the meaning of the Vedic mantras that you have learned never lose their meaning for you in this world, in the next. So he blessed them that the transcendental knowledge that they got from him never loses its value. Sometimes something in the beginning of our spiritual life has deep meaning and significance, but then later as the years goes by, if we are not careful, we lose uh, the understanding of the importance of that thing. But in this case, Sandipani Muni blessed two of them never to lose the meaning of the Vedic mantras and their importance. So Krishna reminded Sudama Brahman and Sudama was very touched and his natural love for the Lord awoke. So he replied, what could I possibly have failed to achieve, O lover lords, O universal teacher, since I was able to personally live with you, whose every desire is fulfilled at the home of our spiritual master? So he's saying, although I haven't achieved anything material, I was not very materially successful, I haven't earned a lot of money, built a big house, but actually I have achieved everything since I live with you at our guru's house. I had your association with the greatest wealth. And then the Lord asked, Oh, my dear friend, did you bring me any gift? Because Lord decided to finally relieve him of all his poverty once forever. But for that, he needed some reciprocation. So he wanted a gift from Sudama. Did you bring me any gift? What did you bring me from home? I regard as great even the smallest gift given by my devotee in pure love. But I don't care for any gifts and presents from non-devotees. They do not please me. And then he quoted the famous verse from Bhagavad Gita, Patram Pushram Palam Toyam Yomai Bhakta Pariyachati Tadaham Bhakti Pahrita Mashnoi Pratatmana But the Brahmana felt so embarrassed to offer that insignificant flat rice, four hands will have rice, that he didn't say anything. He just bowed his hand in shame. And internally he was thinking, oh my dear Lord, my dear Master, please do not make me ashamed. Even if you request repeatedly, I will not give this flat rice to you. I don't want to give it. I'm ashamed to give it. But the Lord, he was thinking, no, 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 I have to get this, what he brought. I want, because he brought it with so much love. And for the moment, the Lord thought, how has it come about that despite of my omniscience, that this devotee of mine has fallen into such poverty? For a moment, he was doubting, how was it possible that he lived in such a poverty, although he's my friend? But then, quickly understanding the situation because he's omniscient, he spoke to himself. In the past, my friend has never worshipped me out of desire for material opulence, but now he comes me just to satisfy his chaste and devoted wife. So I'll give him a riches that even immortal demigods in heaven cannot obtain. Somebody might object that Sudama should have not become so poverty stricken because Lord says in Bhagavad Gita, Nanya, Chintayantu Maam Ye Jana Pari Upasate, Tesham Nitya Biyuktanam, Yoga Kshimam Vaham Yaham. To those who are devoted to me and worship me with devotion, I preserve what they have and I give them what they need. So how is it possible that he lived in such a poverty? That it means that Lord didn't take care of him? No. Uh, there is an explanation for that, that the charges give. There are two types of pure devotees. First type is one who is completely averse to sense gratification. He's completely animical. He doesn't want anything material. To those type of devotees, the Lord doesn't give. 
because he doesn't want to force them. They just don't want anything material. They have no desire and they have even aversion to material opulence. So to them, he doesn't give. And Sudama belonged, till this point, he belonged to this first category until his wife asked him. And there's a second category of pure devotees, those who neither like nor dislike, basically who are indifferent. They may have material opulence, they may not have, doesn't matter to them. In, so first category, the example is given as Jada Bharata, the one who is completely averse. Avaduta Jada Bharata, he was completely averse to any sense gratification. So he didn't have anything. And second type of pure devotee, who is indifferent to sense gratification, example is given of Prahlad Maharaj. Although he was a completely pure Shuddha Bhakta, still he enjoyed great material opulence being king of the world. You may ask, what about those who like material opulence and sense gratification, third category? It's not mentioned by Srila Vishnu Chakrati Thakur. Well, maybe those who like it, they're not pure devotees yet. <laughs> For them, the, the Lord, instead of giving, he takes away. Yasyaham anugrinami harishe tadanam shanai. He gradually takes away their wealth <laughs> in order to make them detached from it. So Krishna, seeing that Sudama is not giving him willingly, he forcefully snatched that little cloth from his waist. He opened it, and when he saw it, he was in ecstasy. He said, oh, my friend, what did you bring to me? This little flat rice is giving me extreme pleasure. Indeed, these few grains of rice will satisfy not only me, but the entire universe. After saying this, he took one palmful and put it in his mouth. After that, he wanted to take a second, second handful, but Queen Rukmini Devi, she took and hold his hand. She didn't want him to have it anymore without saying anything. Internally, she was thinking, this hard, flat rice will spoil my Lord's stomach. I don't want him to take. But there's another meaning also. She also was thinking, well, if he eats everything alone, what is going to be left for me and uh, my maidservants? So something should be kept for us also. So she told the Lord, my dear Krishna, what you took is already enough to give him opulence higher than any dem than the opulence of any demigods. So don't force me to surrender myself to this Brahmana by taking a second palmful. This is enough. So in this way, uh, the night came and the Sudama, he spent that night in Lord Achyuta's place, eating to his full satisfaction and drinking. For many years he was hungry, now he could eat. And he felt like he was in Vaikuntha. He felt like he was in a spiritual world. So next morning he prepared to leave. Krishna accompanied him on the road for some distance, offered him obeisances and let him go. So Sudama started walking and thinking how wonderful it was that he met his friend and although he had apparently received no wealth because he was too shy to beg, he felt perfectly satisfied that he had the audience of Krishna. And then he started inquiring, Kvaham Daridra Papiyan, who am I? Kvaham Daridra Papian. I'm a sinful poor friend of a Brahmana. He, he considered himself a Brahma Bandhu, not real Brahmana, friend of a Brahmana. Daridra, very poor. And who is Krishna? Kwa Krishna? Srini Ketana. He is the supreme personality of Godhead, full on six opulences. I'm Brahma Bandhu Ritis Maham Bahobyam Pari Rambita. Nonetheless, he has embraced me with his two arms. So it was amazing that although I'm such a 
sinful and poor person, Shini Ketana, the Lord who is possessor of all opulence, he embraced me with his two arms. So he was admiring the Lord's mercy. He served me with devotion by massaging my feet, applying ointments and oil. He worshipped me like he worshipped the devatas. And although I came to beg something from him, he knew if this poor wretch suddenly becomes rich, he will forget me in his intoxicating happiness. That's why out of his compassion, the Lord didn't grant me even a little wealth because he knew it will not be good for me. So thinking in this way, Sudama finally came to the place where his hut used to be. But there, there was another sight. Instead of broken hut, he saw many celestial palaces towering, rivaling the brilliance of sun, fire, and moon. And they were surrounded by splendorous courtyards and gardens filled with the flocks of queen birds and beautiful ponds with many birds cooing. And finally, a third man and two eyed woman stood there waiting for him. So he was completely astonished. What is all this? Whose property is it? How has all this come about? So how has that come about? Previous night, his wife, she fell asleep in that broken hut uh, with uh, her emaciated body in rags. And then in the morning, she woke up finding that her body and the house was trans trans completely transformed. She looked like a Apsara from heaven and the hut became celestial palace. And then she was not actually very surprised. She knew that my friend, that my husband went to meet Sri Krishna and this is the result of Krishna's mercy. So she was very happy and she was surrounded by unlimited maids and servants. So she took them all outside of the palace to wait for her husband because she knew he was on the way back. So when, when the chaste lady saw her husband, her eyes were completely filled with tears. She recognized him because he was still dressed in rags, but he could not recognize her because she looked uh, like a celestial maiden. But then some maid servants came and informed Sudama, this is your wife. And he looked at her and he was completely amazed. My wife? He could not recognize her. But at that moment, his body also became completely transformed and became a, like a body of a demigod. Youthful, beautiful, and strong. So together with the servants and wife, he came inside of the palace and started looking around. The beds were soft and white like a foam. The furniture was made of gold. Seats were made of gems. The walls were made of crystal, clear crystal. Everywhere were huge emeralds shining in the darkness, jewel lamps. It was amazing opulence and wealth. So he wondered, how has this wealth appeared? Where has this come from? I have always been poor since my birth. So certainly this is possible only by mercy of my dear friend Sri Krishna, the most exalted of Yadus, who is enjoyed of unlimited wealth, noticed that I had a secret desire in my heart when I came to him. That's why he bestowed all this wealth to me. Krishna was thinking, my friend, he gave me something beyond my, his capacity. That flat rise was beyond his capacity because he had, didn't have it in his household. So since he gave me something beyond his capacity, I'll give him something beyond my capacity. But actually, I'm not able to do, to do this. I'm not able to repay to him. In this way, Krishna became embarrassed by not being able to properly reciprocate his devotee. So Sudama prayed to the Lord, the Lord who is supremely compassionate, reserve all whole transcendent qualities, life after life, may I serve him with love, friendship, and sympathy, and might cultivate such firm attachment for him 
by the precious association of his devotee. And then he mentioned one, uh, something significant. He said, to a devotee who lacks spiritual insight, the Supreme Lord will not grant the wonderful opulences of the world, kingly power and material assets. Indeed, in his infinite wisdom, the unborn, um, unborn Lord well knows how the intoxication of pride can cause the downfall of the wealthy. So that's why if Krishna is not giving, him, giving us unlimited opulences, we should know that we lack spiritual insight. So in this way, uh, Sudhama lived happily enjoying the material opulences without attachment that was given to him, all the time thinking that eventually he has to renounce all this. So that's why he was not distracted. He didn't deviate. He didn't get intoxicated. He accepted the opulence given to him, but still he remained in full Krishna consciousness. And Sri Jiva Goswami mentions that Sudama's last trace of illusion lay in a subtle pride of being renounced Brahmana. But now when he got this opulence, he couldn't hold on this pride anymore because he was not renounced anymore. So in this way, his last impurity was cleansed. And in this way, not long after that, he was together with his wife transferred to spiritual abode with the Lord to Gloka Vrindavan. So, Lord is doing two things. He's taking away and he's giving also. So let us try to answer this question. What, when, why, how he's taking away and giving. So what is he giving? What is he taking away? He sends he himself says, whatever is detrimental to our devotional service, he will take away. So we should watch up. If we are especially attached to something, about to something, this is obstacle for spiritual progress. And if Krishna is merciful to us, he will take that thing away because it distracts us from performing pure devotional service. So when he will take away? Uh, whenever we need it the most. Whenever we are in crisis. Whenever our material disease has progressed so much that urgent operation is needed to save our spiritual life. And why he will take it away? Because he is our best friend. He wants us the, to develop love for him and come back to him, to, to take shelter of him. How he will take away, that we don't know. Any way he finds suitable, through our near dear ones, to friends, enemies, natural catastrophes, social disagreements, mental, emotional, bodily plane, no limits. He can do any way he wants. What about Lord's giving? What is he giving? Well, we know that he gives whatever we need to keep our body and mind in normal condition that we can perform devotional service. He himself says, Yoga Kshriyam Vaham Yaham. So he's already giving what we need, especially what we need for our service. But sometimes he's giving something, Esther, when we specifically need it, specific thing. Once we don't need it anymore, he takes away. If you remember, Arjuna had a special powers that Lord used to defeat demoniac uh, soldiers. Once the war of Kurukshetra was finished and Arjuna's powers were not needed anymore, he took them away from him and he was defeated by some cowherd, uh, cowherds, which was unimaginable for such a hero as Arjuna. So how does the Lord know what we need and what to give? Uh, there is one shloka in the third canto that the uh, Lord is saying to Kashyapa Muni, I would like to quote, having come to know what was in your mind, I have already arranged for that for which you have worshipped me well through your mental and sensory discipline. So Kashyapa Muni, uh, he wanted, Kar not Kashyapa, sorry, Kardama Muni, he wanted a uh, suitable wife, that's why he worshipped the Lord, and without even him saying that openly, the Lord knew the desire of his heart. So in the purpose, Shula Prabhupada said, the Supreme Personality of Godhead in his Paramatma feature is situated in everyone's heart. 
He knows therefore the past, present, and future of every individual person, as well as his desires, activities, and everything about him. It is stated in Bhagavad Gita, he is seated in the heart as a witness. The personality of God had knew the heart's desire of Kardama Muni, and he had already arranged for the fulfillment of his desires. He never disappoints a sincere devotee, regardless of what he wants, but he never allows anything which will be detrimental to the individual's devotional service. So he knows our hearts, he knows what we desire and want, but if that is something detrimental to our devotional service, he will not allow it. If it's not, he might give it. So how he will give it? Unlimited, again, unlimited number of ways. Probably it will not be that one day we will wake up in a palace like Sudama or win a lottery or something. But he can give. He has no, no limits. Srila Prabhupada mentions in one uh, purport, the Krishna consciousness movement actually started with only 40 rupees, but now it has more than 40 crores worth of property, and all this opulence has been achieved within 8 or 10 years. This is amazing. No karmi can expect to improve his business so swiftly, and besides that, whatever a karmi acquires is temporary and sometimes frustrating. In Krishna consciousness, however, everything is encouraging and improving. So if Krishna really wants to give, he will give. You should not worry. Actually, he wants to give us something much more than material opulence. He wants to give us the greatest opulence, the opulence of pure love, of pure love for him. He wants to give us premadan. But we also have to be desirous to receive this sort of wealth. If we are desirous of material wealth, we are not proper recipient for the wealth that the Lord wants to give us. In Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's pastimes, there was one devotee named Kulavecha Shidhar, who was also, like Sudama Brahmana, very, very poor, lived in a broken hut, and somehow maintained himself by selling some banana products like banana leaf, leaf plates, cups, and stamps. And half of his uh, income he would uh, give for worship of Mother Ganga. All night he would sing the Lord's holy names and his neighbors, they were thinking that he was crying out of hunger because he was such a poor fellow. So he was thinking that out of hunger he's screaming all night. That's why they complained. But he didn't care. Every day Lord Chaitanya would come as Nimai Pandit in his scholarly uh, pastimes and he would bargain for banana leaf plates. He would always, although Shridhar would quote the proper price, Lord Chaitanya would always ask for less and less. In this way he would forcefully take some products at improper price and seeing the insolence of this young Brahman and being enchanted by his amazing beauty, Kulavecha would always give. So during the 21-hour Mahaprakash Lila, the Lord Chaitanya sat on the throne of Lord Vishnu, exhibiting the supreme opulence of Krishna, he asked for Kulavecha Shridhar to be brought in front of him so the devotees went searching for him. They found him singing holy names in his heart. So they brought him and told him, the Lord wants to see you, the Lord wants to see you. And then the Lord displayed his opulence. He manifested his bluish complexion as Krishna with a flute. Next to him was a Balaram and all the demigods worshiping him. Seeing this scene, the Kola Vajra, he completely fainted. And the Lord asked him, my dear Sridhar, ask for benediction. I want to give you something. I want to give you Ashtasiddhis, eight mystic perfections. Sridhar refused. I don't want any Anima, Lagima, Mahima and other Siddhis. I want to give you kingdom higher than the kingdom of Lord Brahma. I don't want any kingdom. What did he want? 
he prayed for benediction, the dead Brahmana who regularly quarreled with him over banana leaves and flowers may remain his lord bird after bird. He didn't accept anything else. And he prayed the devotees of Lord Goranga always be his association. So Srila Bhaktisanthara Thakur, he commands the devotees of Sri Goranga, they do not hanker for any material object. They simply pray for the transfer service of the Lord. And he also mentions that Vaishnava cannot be recognized by his external features. People who are intoxicated with the pride due to their material assets cannot understand the glories and opulences and wealth of Sridhara, who is exalted Transal Vaishnava. Although from the material point of view, such devotees as Sridhar and uh, Sudama Vipra, they appear to be poverty stricken, deficient. In reality, they have no deficiency. Although Vaishnavas sometimes appear in poor families within this world to teach the fallen and wretched living entities to worship Hari, they are not actually poor. The purpose of such pastimes, like pastime of Sudama Vipra, and pastime of Kulaveta Sridhar is to demonstrate how one can worship Lord in spite of being born in poor family. So we cannot complain, oh, we don't have enough facilities or wealth to be very advanced. I don't think anybody you know, of us is so poverty stricken as Sudama or Kulaveta Sridhar. That's why we have no excuse not to be on the same level of pure devotion as they were. And this is very easy in this age of Kali, just by chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Rama Hare Hare. We can attain the greatest wealth. I'll stop here. It's already nine o'clock. If you have any quick comment or questions. Yes, Mataji. Are there any... Mike is there, please. Guruji, I have a doubt regarding uh, the version of uh, pure devotees that how can one have aversion because aversion is opposite to attachment. So you said there are two types of pure devotees because devotees would always engage whatever they have, I mean, in the service of Krishna. Uh, this is Shri Vishnu Chakra Thakur's classification of two types of pure devotees. So I would assume that their aversion is not material. Usually you think aversion and attachment are two sides of the same coin. So the aversion would be just another side of attachment. But no, this is a transcendental aversion that Jada Bharat had. Definitely he had no attachments, but he was so careful that he didn't want to speak in order not to get entangled in a material uh, dealings. That's why when his father was trying to teach him uh, basic Brahminical rules, he pretended to be completely deaf. Because in his previous life, he was a Maharaj Bharat, he had all the opulences. And still, he was not successful because of his attachment to small deer. So in this life, he was so determined not to make the same mistake again that he had a, such a great determination not to have anything with anything material anymore. So this is actually that aversion. It's not really aversion. It was firm determination that he wants to deal only with the transital things, with the Krishna. Nothing to do with the material things. It, it, it's it's a, not material aversion, but it's, it's a devotional mood or favor, flavor. Just he's in such bhava that he's completely finished with this material world and he doesn't want to accept any material opulence. Maharaj Priyavrata also, when Lord Brahma came, he was performing uh, tapasya and uh, he didn't want to rule the world. So Lord Brahma had to convince him to accept the material opulence because the devotee is also afraid if he has to deal with these material things, he might get distracted and might fall down. This is also transital fear. So this aversion comes from actual attachment to the transital loving service of the Lord, not from aversion as uh, another side of uh, attachment.
Okay. Anything else? Yes, Prabhu. Just a, just a second for Mike to come. Towards the beginning of your presentation, you mentioned that um, you know when Krishna is actually taking away or giving mm. not your karma. I was just wondering how do you really know whether it's actually or whether it's your action? Yeah, it is difficult to judge whether it's Krishna or karma or it's both. Sometimes Krishna uses your karma but as devotees we should uh, have faith that we are not just left with our own karma that Krishna is actually actively present in our life from the very beginning even if we are still new for devotees Krishna is present so whatever happens is not without his sanction so I would rather be inclined to think it's Krishna. If you are serious devotee and sincere devotee, Krishna is the one who is actually controlling whatever is happening to you. Even although you are still not on advanced platform, still whatever you get, whatever you lose, Krishna is sanctioning. It's not just karma. So we can never know for sure, of course, but it's better to take its Krishna than karma because then uh, we know that we depend on him and we then try to take shelter of him instead of trying to take shelter in our previous pious activities or try to avoid our impious activities. It's better just to take full shelter of Krishna and then to consider whatever comes or whatever goes away, it's from him. This is a mood of full surrender, of Sharanagati. Yes, Pankaj Jankri Prabhu, just please. Thank you. Thank you. There was a couple of um, things that Srila Vishnu Chakravati Thakur mentioned about the Sri Sudhama story. You, know, you didn't mention it. Uh, the, maybe for some reason, about the, the chickpeas. He ate chickpeas and didn't give to Krishna. Sudam ate chickpeas? Uh, you, you remember, you, remember you, you know that one? No, I, I, I don't so remember. The story was that, that when, they, when they were out collecting firewood and they got stuck out in the storm, it was cold and they were hungry. <coughs> and Sudama had some chick oh. chola in his pocket. So he was, he was eating, because he only had a little bit, but he was making a crunch, crunch, crunch. Krishna said, what's that sound? He said, no, nothing. <laughs> he was actually eating some, because <clears throat> he, had, he had such a only, a, only a few, that, and he was so hungry, that he didn't share with Krishna. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and because of that, then he couldn't enjoy any material, any other facility, therefore he was poverty stricken, because he withheld from... Krishna. <clears throat> and the other side, the end of, end of the story, when, um, when <clears throat> Sudama went to Dwarka and um, he asked, he, uh, Krishna uh, poses a question, why didn't um, Krishna give him anything at that particular time? He waited till he got back home. He didn't, mm -hmm. he didn't, he, Krishna didn't give him anything. When he got home, he found that you know, all these opulence was waiting for him there. And he says in that regard that <clears throat> Krishna, he was thinking, how can I reciprocate with Sudhama? Because I promised to reciprocate. So he, what he gave me, he had to beg for that because he didn't have anything. Mm. So he gave me more than what he had. Mm. But I have everything. So how can I give him more than what I have? <clears throat> so he said, therefore, Krishna was a little embarrassed at that point. So then he just didn't do anything, but he arranged in the future that when he left and went home by himself, then he would mm. have some kind of reward. 
Hare Krishna. Thank you, thank you very much for this nice insight. Okay, the last Mataji, because we are already out of time. Hare Krishna. Prabhu, in the 10th canto, it said that Krishna gave Sudama a cow. Do the Acharya, uh, the Avishnu Chakra Vajitaku, does he mention that? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, after worship him, I had it puja, Krishna gave him a gift of a cow. Well, I don't know whether he took that cow back with him. It's not mentioned, but it's mentioned that uh, as a gift, after doing the puja to Sudama Brahmana, as custom is, Krishna gave him a cow. Okay, thank you very much. Bhagavatam ki jai shila prabhupad ki jai gor pramanande hari hari bhu.